Is that a Titan? Is it? Is, is there a Titan coming? Well, we didn't get a Titan with Ampere, but are we getting a Titan with Lovelace? Ah! Well, uh, so Copite, Cop, 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 Copity, Cop, Seven Kimi over here on uh, <laughs> Twitter, a, again, well known leaker if you follow my channel, Copite is tweeting things all the time about all sorts of GPUs and has a good track record of getting things right, so probably does have some kind of inside information here. But anyway, we're getting an update on June 2nd to a tweet from April 26th, so let's go back and see the full story. So back on April 26th, uh, Copite7Kimi has tweeted, in fact, there is another full fat AD102 SKU. Now what is AD102? So AD would be the Ada Lovelace, the successor to Ampere, the RTX 4000 series uh, GPU, and the 102 would be the top end version of that that we would expect to see on things like your 4090. Well, they're saying a full fat uh, AD102 SKU with a 900 watt TGP. Yeah, this is where some of those 900 watt rumors were coming from. 48 gigabytes of 24 gigabit per second GDDR6X memory. Yeah, that's double the 3090's 24 gigabytes. Uh, two by 16 pin power connector and higher frequency. But at the time they were saying, no one knows whether it will become an actual product because the test board of AD102 has more than two 16-pin power connectors, so everything is possible. So back on April 26th, what we were basically seeing is it looked like, assuming we believe Copite, that NVIDIA was testing this absolute monster 900-watt, 48-gigabyte GPU. Well, now on June 2nd, Copai is replying to this and saying it means performance, power consumption, and volume. A Titan with 800 plus watt looks good. Okay, so this isn't just saying, you know, outright confirm, Titan will come out and here's your release date. But like a Titan with 800 plus watts looks good? That sounds an awful lot like Copai is hearing that a 800 watt <laughs> AD102 Titan card uh, could be on the way. Now, this would be a bit interesting for NVIDIA to kind of back off on their whole, you know, they went with the 90 class rather than a Titan class uh, with the Ampere generation. But um, 800 watts, what? <laughs> Anyway, we'll see what comes of this. You know, leaks and rumors. Sounds like it's at least being tested, if we believe. Um, Copity? Copity 7 Kimi? I don't know, man. Anyway, how about another uh, mythical creature of a GPU? What is this? Is that actually an Intel Arc desktop GPU? Well, I mean... It could just be a plastic shroud with nothing inside. But Intel does seem to be actually showing off their ARC limited edition. Uh, <laughs> ARC GPU, which we may or may not ever see in reality. Well, what do we know about this? Well, this is at Intel Extreme Masters. Uh, it, so this is definitely actually being shown off uh, by Intel here. But again, is this just, you know, a mock-up without a real working GPU inside? Who knows? When will we actually be getting these GPUs? What GPU is this? It just says limited edition on it. Uh, this is probably either the A770 or we have heard a rumor of there being an A780. All the rumors for over a year now have pointed to something like RX 6700 or RTX 3070 class performance, which was impressive at the time, but if it launches around the time we're getting new, you know, a whole new generation of GPUs from the competitors, then this will probably only be exciting if we see it at a low price point. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. I think that Intel's probably at this point going to go with OEM partners uh, to get most of their GPUs out there in the wild, and maybe the DIY market and selling uh, with competition that way might end up being more of an afterthought. I don't know. I will say I, I like the GPU design for the reference model. I mean, this looks nice. 
Uh, so, uh, good good design Intel. Now, we will actually be getting some Intel mobile GPUs probably kind of soon in a country outside of South Korea, like maybe even the United States, New Zealand, and Australia. Now, what's going on with this? Well, it looks like we're getting a, um, a, a couple of different laptops that are featuring the ARC A370M. Now, if you're still confused by Intel's naming systems on these, uh, you know how they have their like core i3 is the low end for their CPUs? Well, that's how the ARC A series is. The A3 is the low end, but then the 70 is the higher end of the two. They've got a 50 that's the lower end. And then you would have some A5s that are better and some A7s that are better than that. Okay, so anyway, the A370M, has been available in like South Korea in like one particular laptop. Well, we're now seeing HP Envy laptop 16TH000 um, for $1,400, but it looks like it will actually be shipping on July 1st in the United States, at least according to the HP website. So, I mean, that's a lot of money, but I mean, it does come with a 16 inch 120 Hertz IPS panel with 400 nits. So, you know, I, I think the idea here uh, is that you're, you're not paying $1,400 for that GPU. It just, that is the GPU that it has. Now, we're also seeing a uh, Yoga 7i Gen 7 16 inch Evo laptop uh, from, uh, well, this one I think, uh, well, from Lenovo and, and quite expensive. <laughs> but this one is also uh, listing some. Uh, ARC A370M action on it. And when should we get this one? Well, this one will be starting in 10 weeks estimated shipping. So that's even later than the July 1st release date on this one. So yeah, Intel's still taking their sweet time getting any of these to any real segment of the market. Um, anyway, we're getting a whole bunch of leaks from Moore's Law is Dead regarding some upcoming Intel CPUs. Now, th this is regarding Meteor Lake, or the 14th gen for the most part. So remember, Intel's next CPUs coming out will be the 13th gen, Raptor Lake, and they will be supporting the same uh, LGA 1700 socket Raptor Lake will be as the Alder Lake CPU. So somebody with a 12th gen uh, Intel CPU could update to a 13th gen. But according to Moore's Law is dead, so again, this is rumored, not official from Intel, their 14th gen will no longer support that socket. So if you were hoping for three generations or more of socket compatibility for upgrades, in the way that AMD offered with their AM4 uh, platform, uh, that does not seem to be the case if Moore's Law is dead is to be believed. Now he does have a cool screenshot um, showing uh, the actual um, alleged LGA2551 processor, which is interesting, and also has some performance rumors and, and whatnot um, you know, with a low degree of confidence, he kind of color codes his, his confidence in his statements. He's thinking that there could be a, a 12 to 21 percent IPC increase with Redwood Cove over Raptor Cove. But that's the current uh, estimate. It's a huge range. And he's saying that that's just a mostly confident rather than his high confidence or very high confidence. Has a lot of other little details about this. Um, I think the most interesting thing to me, and again with a middling confidence level, is a release date estimate uh, being, uh, well, quarter two, quarter three, 2023 for laptops. Personally, I don't care much about laptops, but quarter four, we're seeing 2023 desktop launch. Well, that's interesting because a lot of the other rumors we've seen pointed to a uh, 2024 launch date for Meteor Lake. And, um, you know, that's interesting in the sense of, you know, when, when are, the, you know, we've got Zen 4 coming out, how about Zen 5, what's going to be the competitor to that? Uh, but anyway, I'm just really happy to see a lot of competition in the CPU space lately, uh, because we had so many years of stagnation. Now, he does have a little bit of a Intel Alchemist uh, stuff uh, lined up here. So it generally seems like Intel's planning to dump a lot of their ARC volume into OEM channels, which I agree with. I think uh, the, the DIY launch is going to be pretty limited here. I think they're going to get these out in the market uh, by, by getting them to system integrators and pre-builts. 
Anyway, uh, he's thinking end of June or later high-end OEM desktop launch. Uh, July, August, low-end OEM desktop launch. Late July or later low-end mobile, decent availability at OEMs. And August would be the workstation launch with blower coolers. So anyway, we'll see what comes of that. Uh, I gotta say, I think uh, I'm probably there with a lot of you where I used to be really excited about these Intel GPUs and my excitement has diminished. But hey, speaking of future uh, CPU upgrades, you might be wanting DDR5. And if you're gonna get that Zen 4 from AMD, you're gonna have to get DDR5. But when DDR5 launched, the prices were insane. The good news is that uh, according to Computer Base here, seems to be the original source of this, and then this is an article being reported by Video Cards, we're seeing DDR5 uh, pricing on a very steady and steep decline. So I'm, I'm very much hoping by the time that somebody wants to upgrade to Zen 4, uh, or do a Zen 4 build, that DDR5 pricing will have come uh, down to be not quite such a bad deal. Although if the high-end chips and motherboards and everything are what they launch with first anyway, uh, it, you know, you wouldn't really be getting the budget-conscious build right at launch. But uh, we do need to see DDR5 price approach reason before I'm going to be recommending it in a build because it's just diminishing returns given its performance upgrade. Now anyway, how about some even more PC uh, releases for former Sony exclusive game properties. Well, this one's not official. We got the official announcement for the Spider-Man stuff uh, in my last video. Well, in this one, we're getting rumored, leaked, but it looks pretty, uh, pretty good that we'll be seeing Returnal and Sackboy coming out on PC. Now, this is not the first time we've seen these rumors. There have been some info of this, uh, like, show up in, like, I think the Steam database. Uh, but what we're seeing now are actual screenshots of what seem to be, you know, PC screenshots with PC graphics settings for uh, Returnal here. And there's enough screenshots here that this would be a lot of effort to, to try to fake something like this, not that nobody would. Um, but again, we're seeing a Sackboy here with what looks like keyboard uh, controls and, and all of that. So there's a lot of evidence here that these will actually be showing up on, the, um, on, on PC. I don't know when, but that would be cool. I'm really excited to see a lot of Sony properties coming to PC. It seems like they're selling well, which is encouraging um, Sony to keep doing this, uh, which great, I don't need to buy a PS5 <laughs> to play some of these good exclusives. Now, um, a little bit of a report on the Steam Hardware Survey, uh, which is WCCF Tech analyzed the Steam Hardware Survey and saw six core CPUs finally outpacing quad core CPUs, uh, becoming the new gaming standard. So naturally I hopped in to verify that information and it looked like, uh, after more surveys had completed, we're, we're back to four CPU cores being the most popular. Uh, but it's getting close. <laughs> it, it, the, and six core is definitely right on the heels here. It's neck and neck. They're basically both about 33% of the Steam hardware survey. And then with eight cores coming in at 19%. And we still got 10% running, uh, you know, some dual cores over here. But keep in mind that the Steam hardware survey, some people run Steam on some low-end platforms besides their main gaming PC. They also have it installed on an old laptop or some old thing where they just use it for like Steam chat and they aren't really like playing games on it, which is why I think that this is interesting but doesn't always give a perfect idea of the gaming landscape. And we're still seeing that 1080p is 67% of the uh, Steam hardware survey for in terms of monitors. And it looks like the multi-monitor resolution that's most popular is a 3840 by 1080 uh, setup, which is interesting. Um, and it looks like Windows 10 is gaining market share <laughs> rather than Windows 11 here. 16 gigabytes of RAM is the most common. Anyway, lots of interesting stuff uh, here, but guess who is still holding on as the most popular GPU? Well, it is the GTX 1060 
followed by the 1650, the 1050 Ti, the 2060, the 1050, the 1660 Ti, and we're not seeing a 3060 card until here, and that's a 3060 laptop GPU. Then we've got the 1660 Super, the 1070, and then finally, we have the RTX 3060 come in as a desktop 3000 series, and then followed by 3070, 2070 Super, 1660, 3060 Ti, 3080. We can see some market share gains here. So with prices coming down, these are finally uh, coming up. And then finally, we have an AMD competitor here with the RX 580. Anyway, I could just keep reading this stuff, but you, you could read it too. I find it interesting to see, you know, what, what are people actually using in their systems? I'm gonna end the video. I hope all of you have an excellent day.